Hi, my name is Tom, and I'm one of the volunteers at the Raritan Valley Habitat for Humanity Restore in Manville. One of the things I do at the Restore is fix up some of the furniture that gets donated. This piece uh, is a, um, a cupboard, uh, like a server. Um, the top part is no longer around, and the surface has been distorted by moisture, sunlight, and wet leaves. You actually see the pattern of the leaves, which is kind of neat, uh, but I don't want that. So we're going to fix up the top of this piece. It's made out of solid wood, so I don't have to worry about sanding down into the veneer. And right over here, there's an area where a mouse has chewed the wood. So we're going to fill that in with some plastic wood, let that set, and then we'll sand down the top to get it ready for finishing. So here I purchased um, from my local hardware store uh, plastic wood, professional wood filler, and this one happens to be the color of walnut. There are several colors to choose from depending on uh, the finish of your wood. So this is dark, and we're going to take the plastic wood it's a putty. It smells pretty bad. We're going to fill in this whole area here that was chewed up by the mouse. And I hope it doesn't have an upset stomach. And here we go. Get that filled in nice. A little bit extra is no problem because we're going to be sanding this off. We just want to make sure that this whole area now has the same contours as if it never got chewed. And almost done. A little bit more here. There. Now we're going to let this dry. And I'm going to come back and sand that nice and smooth. Let's talk a little bit about sandpaper. I'm going to be sanding off uh, the excess um, wood, plastic wood that I put on. And um, sandpaper comes in different grades. Uh, grades of coarseness. The lower the number, the more coarse it is. Think of 80 as being 80 pieces of sand within a square inch. So 80 is very coarse. And you can get 150, 220, 400, 800, and 1,000. So, very fine sandpaper has a very high number. And as you sand your piece of furniture, you're going to want to make sure you get nice and smooth. Because um, sandpaper basically scratches the wood. And the higher the grade, the finer the scratches and the smoother the surface will be. Many people use a sanding block with their sandpaper. You can make your own out of a piece of wood and put the sandpaper right on the piece of wood. Um, there are mechanical um, devices where you clamp in your sandpaper. Some are electric, some are manual. And you can also buy a sanding block that feels like a sponge and has coarseness on it and uh, these tend to be coarse not the real fine so be careful as you're sanding you're going to see a lot of sawdust so I'm going to start sanding off the plastic wood that I applied before to fill in where the mouse ate the wood and I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done Always sand with the grain. The grain are those lines you see, light and dark lines in the wood. You always want to sand with the grain. If you sand against the grain, you're going to mar the surface. And you want to keep the surface as smooth as you can without going against the grain. So this is going to take a little while for me to sand down, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all complete. Okay, so I've gotten 
the plastic wood down to the same level as the top of the piece of furniture and now that area that the mouse chewed is nice and smooth and once we put the stain and varnish on here this is pretty much um, going to disappear. It's going to look pretty nice. So now I'm going to go ahead and sand the rest of the surface um, which is not in good shape so hopefully it will get down to bare wood nice and smooth uh, using different grades of sandpaper uh, and then we'll wipe it down with uh, mineral spirits to clean it off nice. That's coming along now. You can get me down to bare wood in a few spots where the wood is raised. So we'll keep sanding it until it's nice and smooth and all of the varnish is off the wood. So here I'm sanding with the uh, 80 grit sandpaper, the coarse, and I can see the scratches that the sandpaper is putting into the wood and as we move to a finer grit sandpaper there will be less scratches and it will be much smoother. But what's nice about this is now I can see the grain of the wood. It's a very nice grain that's going to come up nice when we have it all finished. So I'm going to keep sanding and I'll show you the whole top when it's done. This is the edge right here where the mouse chewed the top of the piece of furniture and I filled it in with plastic wood. And after sanding it, it's almost disappeared. The difference in the color almost matches the difference in the colors of the grain. Uh, this looks like it may be a uh, fir or a spruce. Um, feels quite hard even though it's considered the soft wood and it's sanding up really nice. So okay I have finished my first layer of sanding with 80 grit sandpaper. I've taken all of the varnish off the top of the piece of furniture and it's a nice piece of wood. There's a couple little blemishes that are tiny and once I put on the dark stain and a layer of polyurethane they're pretty much going to disappear. So now I'm going to take 220 grit and finer grit of sandpaper and make it even smoother and then we'll get ready to put on some stain. So I just finished sanding the wood with um, the 220 grit, the sawdust has a consistency of, um, I would say, cornstarch. And I think we sanded enough. What we're going to do now is use some tack cloth to take off the sawdust and then some mineral spirits to rinse it down. This is all to get it ready for staining. So this is tack cloth. Um, it looks like cheesecloth that's um, been soaked in honey. It's very sticky. And what you do is you open it up and you take your fine layer of sawdust off the wood with the tack cloth. Takes it right off. And you can use more than one tack cloth. Right now this is doing a pretty good job. It's taking it all off. And when you're done, you just throw a little tack cloth away. So I have a can of mineral spirits. It says odorless. There is a little bit of odor, but it's not that bad. And um, it says clean up interior jobs. Well, this is my interior job. Um, what I do is I put the mineral spirits right on the piece of furniture. And it really brings out the color of the wood and the grain. And I'm going to use a clean terry cloth rag to wipe the wood down. And as I do this, I can feel if there's any imperfections in the wood. And I can look, make sure I sanded everything down. Don't be afraid to be generous with it. If the wood's very dry, it's going to soak it up. Actually, might put a bit of life back into the wood. This piece has been sitting around for a long time. 
and it's cooking it right up. And we'll just wipe that all off. I'm happy with what I have. There's a little bit of a bleached out area here and here where the hutch was. And I'm hoping that my stain is just going to soak right into that and it won't be that noticeable when we're done. I'm going to use penetrating wood stain. This is made by Verithane and the color is espresso. That's the closest color I could find to match my bar. And uh, you stir it up. Make sure it's consistent. You take a very clean rag and let that soak up and just put it right into the wood. And this is a very, very dark brown. And we're just going to keep pushing it in. Let that soak up. And what I'll probably do is do this about three times just to make sure the wood has absorbed all of the stain. And you can still see the grain and the knots in the wood through the stain. It's not paint. It's pretty clear. And that's a nice rich color. That's going to match the bar really nice. Yeah. I'm going to do the whole piece of wood. Be generous with it. And then you're going to wipe most of it off after it's just about dry. Because again, you're not painting the piece of wood. You're staining it. You're going to coat the top of the wood with polyurethane. It's going to give it a nice satin and protective finish. Okay, I'm going to finish this up. Now I let this dry overnight so that the polyurethane adheres to it very well. So um, I let the stain dry overnight and it really came out nice. The natural grain and the knots and the wood have come through. It's the color that I want and what I'm going to do now is take a fresh piece of tack cloth and take off any dust or residue that has rested on the piece of furniture overnight and now that I have all of the dust off we're going to go open up a can of polyurethane and give it a final coat to protect the work. Well, polyurethane is made by several different companies. This one happens to be Varathane. And polyurethane is an oil-based product. Um, I like to use the clear satin. I don't like using a very glossy finish on my furniture. It also comes in a spray can, which gives it a real nice thin layer on top, and you can put several layers over a period of time. Um, but the problem with using spray is really should not use it indoors. It's um, got a very harmful vapor, so we need to do this outside on a warm day. So we're gonna go ahead and open up our can of Verithine liquid and find a nice brush and we're gonna finish this off. So here's the polyurethane and when you apply the polyurethane start at one end work your way all the way over to the other and don't go back and restroke at the beginning because you may get brush strokes that are inconsistent with the rest of the piece of furniture. So just dip your brush in the polyurethane can and here we go. 
going on nice and smooth. And because we're doing the top of the piece of furniture, the polyurethane will settle nice and flat. Don't give it too thick of a coat, but make sure you give it enough to cover the entire top in a nice even layer. After it dries, it's very possible some of it may get absorbed by the wood and you may want to give it a second coat. And if you see any specks of dust in your coat, you can sand it down with a very fine sandpaper, like a 1000 grit. Wipe it again with a tack cloth and enjoy your piece of furniture. Again, this was an old server with a hutch on top and I am repurposing it to be a liquor cabinet behind the bar that I bought at the restore. And it's coming out with a nice finish. See, it doesn't take that long to do. If you should find any bristles from your brush in the polyurethane, you can pick it out quickly before it dries and then brush over it. I think my brush is holding up pretty well. I think I see one, one piece of bristle. Take that off. Brush over it quick before it dries. There we go. Yeah, it's coming out. Good. Really good. And I'm almost done. I'm going to go around the edges. Just in case you get any drips off the side, you can quickly catch them with your brush. And that's looking nice and smooth. Again, once you've done your coat, leave it be. Don't go over it again. Got it. That looks really good. We're going to let that dry. Thank you.